the right. So he turns it in from right to left, or right, left to right, I should say. But as you pointed out, it's tremendous speed here. Got it again. Whew. That's so a that's, big double. You bet. Big and that's double. his third strike so far in the match. He's reached the halfway point. He got one in the second, now on the fourth and fifth. So he's working on a double, but he is a frame late. A frame early, too, on Andre Morissette, who has a double in three and four. Some big scores rolled here. They both found the line on the head pin. Now you notice the grip there with the hand on top of the ball, the fingers very close together, the thumbs on the side of the ball. <laughs> Boy. And Morissette contends that the fact that he really doesn't open that wrist, there's no wrist movement, and this is where his consistency and his accuracy comes from. He's just about always there. He's got that ball backing up just a shade. It's uh, barely noticeable on television, but that ball will break slightly from left to right. Morissette with three in a row, as opposed to two in a row by Jack O'Neill. Fourth here. Right now, actually, he's got what they call a turkey there. Three strikes in a row. Uh-oh. Ooh. Thought he was going to hit it heavy. Four From in a row. a turkey, you go to a four-banger, and that's what he's got. <laughs> nice <laughs> bowling. Ooh, yeah. After starting off with leaving the left corner twice in a row and not picking up a spare, he's had four in a row. And this is the champion of CBC Bowling 20 years ago, and it looks as though he's just kept up the pace. He's had a tremendous record over the years, but this young fella, too, can bowl, and he's not about to quit and give up easy. That's three in a row for him. Some very fine bowling at this point. Now, they call him Spider, and he's got that huge backswing, and that ball, even when he's thick on the head pin, he gets that yeah. good spread. That, that ball just twists off that rubber. Jack O'Neill at 37 years of age is eight years younger than Andre Morissette, both players, good tournament players, and love the... Oh, boy, right on the snoot. A head pin, and that slows him up at this point. Could be a devastating head pin. He has 130 in the fifth with strike in six. The idea here is to pick up as many as possible and count on that strike in the sixth frame. That hurts, doesn't it? After you get it going and you crank that head pin right on it. Well, in a series, of course, you have time to adjust. Uh, if he does that very frequently, he'll move a board, mm -hmm. left or right, in order to allow that ball to break. But actually, he's throwing pretty good here, so I don't think he'll adjust at this point. He's just going to throw with a little more velocity. Jack O'Neill has been on the head pin every frame. And he picks up a total of 12 there, so he has won. 64 after seven. There's George Retzlaff, a picture of George and Fred Scambatti, who did our series 20 years ago. George was the producer director of Fred Scambatti. The late Fred Scambatti was the host. And George is with us today, and it's certainly nice to have him. He's retired from the CBC a few months ago and enjoying his life, and uh, it's nice to have him with us. Andre Moore said he remembers. George remembers just what Andre did 20 years ago. That's why he's here today to watch him again. On that head pin. This is incredible. You told me. You said if he finds that line, he becomes a machine, and he's doing just that. Well, that's that's five in a row, and uh, he really is a machine on this <laughs> thing. The ball works in there just like it's got eyes and great action. Wow. Andre never changes expression. He's very serious, and yet uh, quite a likable personality. Nice man, and. Uh, Boy, when he gets it rolling, he, too, has been on the head pin every time. He's had five strikes in a row, and the first two frames, he left the left corner. And he's on it again. Oh, this time, again, the left corner. Good the one, score. The one thing that these two bowlers do have in common is the follow-through. They both come through. They're accelerating as they release the ball, and they reach right out to the target. In this case, Morissette is bowling at a board. Uh, he's actually looking down the lane about six feet, and that's his line, and... Uh, he uh, just picks it up, and that's the spot that he must hit and reach through to. Is he going to get it this time? Yes. The first two frames, he missed that left corner and couldn't spare up. This time, he's got it, so he's filled for the last six frames. He has 238 in the seventh, and that's well ahead of Jack O'Neill. Here, here's a good look at that ball rotation. Uh, it's actually... It's a reverse rotation. Now it begins to catch on the lane, and now it's just rolling at the same speed that it's moving down the lane. That's the way it picks it up. And Jack O'Neill has just hit the head pin in the eighth 
frame. So that's two head pins in a row, his third so far in this match. And if there was any kind of a comeback that he could mount here, he's all but lost it here because he's not able to fill. Two head pins in a row, devastating, especially after he had hit a turkey of three strikes in a row in frames four, five, and six. Yeah, he trails by 74 yeah. pins here, plus the spare to his 15 yeah. count. Uh, 179 in the eighth, Al. So uh, we look at Andre Morris set there. He has 238 in the seventh with the spare. So uh, there isn't too much that can happen uh, for Jack O'Neill here. Andre Morris set with five in a row on the head pin every time. Well, our next match will have Dwight Anderson, the provincial champion from Edmonton, Alberta, against Wayne Ruhr from Regina, Saskatchewan. Two fine young bowlers, and the winner of that match will meet the winner of this match for the right to go to the semifinals. And unfortunately for Jack O'Neill, now in his ninth, two head pins in a row have hurt him, now that's three. I still uh, admire the way he has bowled because he has been in the middle every frame. And there's a, this is three in a row, but it's not the three in a row that he wanted. No. Uh, it's very difficult now for Jack, uh, who bowls out of Windsor Park Lanes and Polo Park Lanes in Winnipeg. Go, oh, slid across and picked up the two-pin on the right corner. And so in the ninth frame, he's had just a little bit of problem. It would have been interesting if he was able to spare that up. It's possible, of course. We've had a split spared on our program with Pat Pinko. Uh, now in the ninth frame, He'll be able to pick up three more here. So that in a gives ten, In a 10-frame series like this, you just, that's four yeah. head pins. It's just impossible. Yeah. Tough luck. 194 in the ninth, and you can see the dejection there because, look, head pin, head pin, three in a row, one in the first, and four strikes, and then he left a corner pin in the third. He had the range, but he was just hitting it a little too thick, too heavy, too solid in the middle. But uh, Andre Morissette, on the other hand, has just, well, he too has been on the head pin every time, again, and another strike for him. 268 and 8. How smooth this delivery really is. Uh, it's, it's such discipline and uh, very compact. He takes it back, and of course, speed is not going to be a factor. He's just going to lay it in onto the lane and into that pocket. Beautifully done. In the ninth frame, he's working on a strike. He has 268 in the eighth frame. And let's see, he has a chance to go to 358 if he strikes out. Oof, that would be by far the best score on our bowling series so far. Oh, head pin. Tough break. Tough break. So the best he could possibly do here, unless he can manage one of those uh, very rare spares on a head pin, uh, he will not be able to blister the course, so to speak, at 350. Gets the right side, though. So he adds 25 to the 268 and gets 293. And the best he can do now is 308, which is not the best score on our tournament so far. 326 by Jules Caille of Quebec in 84 was the best. But a beautiful finish, 308 for Andre Morissette. And Andre has again shown that uh, 20 years have not dulled his competitive instincts nor have taken away that magnificent bowling touch that he had uh, that he won 25 games with 20 years ago. So Jack O'Neill now in his 10th frame, hoping to strike out to salvage something here. Here's another good shot of that track into the pocket. Good extension, and uh, it just wasn't quite good enough today. But again, to point out... Uh, Jack, who's an engineering associate with the Manitoba telephone system, was not off the head pin once in 10 frames. Has he got it again? Yes. Well, you can see that he just had some bad breaks there with three head pins in a row after a triple. A very fine bowler, no question about that. But that head pin comes up every once in a while and grabs you, and uh, it did that for O'Neill today with four head pins. Really a well-bowled game. He's no hit question. the head pin 12 times in that game. Uh, the only shot he missed the whole game and it was it a corner pin spare they had a kid he's six foot two and uh, pretty rangy yeah. one of the things he has to look to is uh, to get down low at that fall at the foul line he's 28 years old just grazed the head pin there knock it down but not enough power to wipe out the right side his uh, average in the qualifying sessions in that 10 game house round he had 263 and then 277 in the Canadian Championship, so that's how he qualified to get here. 
And uh, he's been bowling 13 years. Another spare there for Wayne Rear with 25 in the first frame. Good start. Well, that's certainly not going to hurt him. No. Wayne Ruhr now will just take a bit of a rest and watch Dwayne Anderson from Edmonton. He was seventh in the men's singles in the national championship. He's at a high game of 420. Looks good. Ooh, just a bit heavy, I guess, on that left side, and that left the right corner pin. So in his opening two frames, Anderson has left both corner pins. He's a spot bowler. Uh, he's using that third dart in uh, uh, when he's shooting at the into the strike zone. Dwight Anderson, another spare. Very interesting beginning. Both players getting fills. Anderson just three points ahead because he picked up just a little more with that head pin sliding off on him. So we have a very, very close match. Dwight in his third. That's a head pin yeah. split. A little bit thick on top, but uh, certainly, obviously. Tell like me, Alan, how do you spare that? That one, uh, you'll, you have to be precisely on the thin side, thin right-hand side of that three pin, and they will all go down. Sort of flip it across the lane. That's what you have to do. It's possible. Not quite that time. Had the right idea. A little bit thinner. It is possible. We've seen it done. And we have also had a split spared here on our our series. Uh, that was by Pat Pinko not too long ago, and it was pretty to watch. Both of those spares are, are very rare, very difficult. Dwight Anderson then has 66 in the third frame. Two spares, and then he picked up a total of 15 in the third. It's a rather unusual approach. Uh, his setup, uh, there really is no backswing. It's a lift up top. 